Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today is April 3rd, and we're doing business and security stories, not social. I don't want to get too excited about this because I'm sure there's going to be a workaround. Yes. I'm sure that this doesn't, it's not going to save us. They're walking it back quick. But I like, like a week. I like that they got their hands smacked here. Yeah. It's something. It's something to be happy about. General Motors quits sharing data, behavior, the driving data, the driving behavior data with data brokers only as long as people are watching. Because right now, there's somebody inside the company that is trying to figure out how they share this data for money. Because, you see, once a company turns on a money spigot, they will not turn it off. But I think what they're worried about is that people are going to buy their cars and be like, oh, no, no OnStar. No. Keep that crap out of my car. I don't think that'll necessarily save you, though. It's... <laughs> No, and in fact, if you weren't <laughs> subscribing to OnStar to begin with, they still got your data. There was like, a, a quote in there from the PR person was like, people really didn't like that. They're yeah. just going to walk it back. Who could have predicted? <laughs> and we still have some job cuts, unfortunately, rolling out. Here we are in Q2. This is still happening. Dell reduces workforce as part of a broader cost-cutting measure. I've got some sad news for everybody that works in these, these uh, vertical integration spaces. Because everything is becoming so homogenized, you just buy entire racks of systems now and you just deploy that and it's a puddle of GPU and CPU and RAM and storage resources and you don't really have to do very much planning anymore. I think those were white collar jobs too. Yeah. Like that was, you know, office and sales and stuff, not necessarily the We're going to get to a point tax. where Dell can be run by like 20 people and a bunch of AI. So well, like, what do I, I want to run a Kubernetes cluster. And it's like, all right, so you need the number seven. If that's true of Dell, how the hell is this company still in business? It had to be the <laughs> meme stocks, right? It gave them such a big shot in the arm that they were able to live longer than they should. The Reuters headline is GameStop faces unsustainable sales decline, cuts jobs to control costs. That's a weird headline for also posting that they, they made money. Like they lost $300 million last year or last quarter or whatever it was. But they're up like $6 million this quarter. And it's because they laid off a consulting firm that was like trying to uh, sears them. I don't understand why anybody goes there. <laughs> the, it was exciting, though. I will say, like, in the little town I grew up in, when we got one there, it was like, oh, we're moving up in the world. What year was that? That was like over oh, 10 years ago. GameStop could definitely reinvent itself because Walmart is selling AM5 CPUs. Like, you could just buy a modern CPU at Walmart. It's crazy. Yeah, but well, you just contradicted yourself. Well, if Walmart's doing it, no one can compete with it because GameStop <laughs> cannot match their prices. Can't even come close to it. Mm. And we have Amazon who obviously is betting on AI. Everybody's betting on AI, but Amazon is betting big with large numbers. Amazon's cloud computing empire, Amazon's web services, real estate holdings include both data centers and office space have doubled since 2020. So Amazon is betting that all these places where they handle packages, they could also handle servers because they've already got the infrastructure and power. And oh boy, are they throwing a lot of money at it. It turns out, I read a separate headline, uh, not necessarily connected to Amazon, but I'm sure this is true. Suddenly, real estate near nuclear plants has gone through the roof. Yeah. Well, uh, Microsoft might have accidentally broken the power grid when they tried to deploy 100,000 GPU servers in one data center. Oops. Now they will be spending that 150 billion to house servers, not employees. Amazon looks to break office leases, shedding 1.3 billion in expenses. So not only are they going to make you come back to the office, those offices are going to be consolidated in high traffic areas and you're going to have to move. You're going into the cube farm. <laughs> the veal fattening also, pan. Also the apartments around the the, the farm there it's there are millions of dollars yeah that's true as well i wonder if that means you're going to have apartments within the exclusion zone around a nuclear power plant <laughs> <laughs> just put them in the steam stacks <laughs> just mount them onto the side <laughs> <laughs> beautiful views 500 dollars a month and uh the last week we learned that the justice department finally rolled out their big apple lawsuit and if it's good enough for the government it should be good enough for all of us right because we all use apple products consumers sue apple taking a page from the u.s justice department lawsuit so this is not the doj lawsuit this is just class action lawsuit consumers are saying hey you've harmed competition you've done all this stuff starting mainly from the app store but there are some repairability uh aspects of this well because the doj mentioned all those things yeah so if the doj can prove it can Apple really say that you're not right? 
they might be tempted to settle. It's amazing, like just in the wild, the number of times that I've seen Max have memory corruption issues, probably because of a, like a bad BGA solder joint or something like that. And the people just live with it. They're just like, oh yeah, it does that sometimes. And it's like, this is clearly a memory corruption issue. But my God could never do wrong. <laughs> so it must be correct, right? This is my penance. I touched an android the other day. <laughs> now, am I wrong? Did we not see this almost exact same story? Like this was the yeah, yeah. This is four weeks ago. Microsoft I, is paying for this one. That's what I'm thinking. Like they they did the first run and they were like, mm, people, and everyone was like, I don't like this. I don't yeah. want it. People didn't really pick up on that. Oh, let's do another push. <laughs> so uh, we're buying into it. The Microsoft's new era of AI PCs will need a co-pilot key. Say Intel. So Microsoft and Intel are getting together, even though right now AMD has better AI performance on their desktop chips. <laughs> And they're putting the co-pilot key on the keyboard so you can hit that. And you can just say, hey, co-pilot, let's do something that doesn't make me want to shove bamboo shoots under my fingernails to make sure I still feel something. That's a little specific. <laughs> you know, that's a, stop trying to make co-pilot happen. Nobody wants co-pilot. YouTube is such a fascinating platform in terms of the comments. Uh, last week, you made the reference to the LinkedIn shortcut. <laughs> and somebody in the comments was like, oh, that's nothing. If you press this series of keys, it'll launch LinkedIn. That's like, what? <laughs> How did you struggle so much to understand what was going on here? Are you AI? <laughs> the co-pilot is ready to help you launch LinkedIn. It's like, I don't want to launch LinkedIn. <laughs> I want to find meaning in my life. And it's like, let's launch LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what meaning is. <laughs> well, uh, the people at Microsoft, we've had some theories that maybe the people in charge of creating the software don't actually use the software or understand it on any level. And here's a crazy idea. What if, if you were in charge of a company that made insanely complex flying machines, you should have some experience with insanely complex flying machines. Nah. That's not what we've got right now. Boeing's new CEO must have a strong engineering background, the Emirates boss says. Not unlike when they put it uh, the CEO of Pepsi in charge of Apple or something like that. Or when Bob Swan became the CEO of Intel. It really didn't work out in the long run. I would definitely love to see more engineers in charge of the plane companies. <laughs> the problem is, I'm, I'm speaking for, I guess, myself here, but like the engineering type usually don't crave that kind of position. They just want to be left alone to tinker. <laughs> no, that's true. But I mean, you throw enough. I'm throw enough money at what it. What they're guess, paying yeah. the existing guy, I'm sure one of the engineers will be like, oh, "Okay, I guess I'll do it." <laughs> Although that would be a miserable job because the whole time I'm sure you're just fighting. Yeah, it's other, just constant yeah. social stuff, and it's like oh, I don't, I don't have the capacity for that. Well, uh, we talk about Amazon getting into the big data center. A company that already is managing a lot of data centers is Cloudflare. And they have some interesting things that they've learned based on the scale of that. Cloudflare says it has an automated empathy, uh, or it has automated empathy, I guess, to avoid fixing flaky hardware too often. So the idea here is that server errors happen. Sometimes that's normal, but we should maybe keep track of what kind of error it was, how serious it was, and how often they occur, because we're replacing servers when really it was probably a cosmic ray or just a fluke, or somebody was in the data center and sneezed too hard and... <laughs> Just at the first sign of trouble, we replace the entire machine. And we really probably don't need to do that. So the AI is constantly contacting each individual machine and, you know, ask, trying to figure out what's going on with it. And they have a rolling plan of that so that there's never more. Was it three or five days? It was three days. It's never more than three days between them going to the server. And it's like, are you OK? <laughs> Well, it's not just okay. It's like it challenges them to do things. So it's not, you can't just be there and breathing. It's like, okay, let's, let's do some little, little workouts. It's like, oh, you're about to have a heart attack. Do you think the servers hate that? Yeah, they do. So you're saying it's not like the United States Senate? Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> Weekly cognitive tests. I would be okay with that. It's like, this is part of it. It's like, you have to do your little test before you get into the building. Okay. And live stream it. <laughs> And uh, a lot of companies, you know, like we say, maybe we should have engineers in charge. Maybe if you put an engineer in charge, they might be bad at other things like, you know, finances. You definitely need to min-max your uh, production team. Fisker lost track of millions of dollars in customer payments for months, according to the TechCrunch headline. And then they lay out a thing here where it's just 
wow, this automotive company really doesn't seem super organized. It's weird. They found it. <laughs> it's fine. It was under the couch cushions. Everybody calm down. How, how can they blame ADP? Like, that's what you, people usually go to. It's like, oh, this is ADP's convoluted accounting system. <laughs> And we talked about the Ray-Ban glasses. This is a, another take on that with maybe slightly more tech, but similar of, hey, do you want to live without a phone? First impressions of Humane's AI pen, a very out of hand proof of concept. We've all been there, right? We this is get too far into the proof of concept. <laughs> this is a narrative style explanation of, of the pen. Uh, the, this author article author also uses the term boutonniere, which uh, in America we only wear during funerals. Or prom. So, yeah. It does AI stuff. And it has a laser projector that you can't use constantly. And it records your life. <laughs> <laughs> it reports that back to a training model, most likely. Here's something that we will never have our hands on, but boy, could it be cool. I wonder how much lighting you need to make this work. So many photons. World's fastest camera shoots at 156.3 trillion frames per second. So basically, it, if it were, uh, what was it? What did it say? 120 FPS. That it would be 32 million years worth of uh, seconds. Femtoseconds, which we usually usually only talk about in terms of theoretical physics, which is probably what they'll use this for. So that's interesting. Get some photography of uh, quarks. Maybe we can find some more abstractions in the. Uh, holes in the abstraction of the universe to exploit. What's the name of the spooky action or something like spooky that? Spooky action at a distance, yeah. yeah. Can we capture that on camera? Now, we all know that NVIDIA is king of the world right now. They are powerful. They're rich. Who's going to stop them? Well, it turns out maybe everybody getting together because they're tired of it. Behind the plot to break NVIDIA's grip on AI by targeting software. This is the Reuters headline. I've got some news for you. NVIDIA is already ahead of you. With uh, the Blackwell generation of GPUs, it's the same hardware or the same software, but with different hardware behind it. And so it's going to turn out not to matter. So the idea here is everybody else gets together and creates an open version of CUDA to compete with NVIDIA so that they're not stuck against all of that. But can you think those guys can even play together correctly? I mean, open OpenCL is already a long way uh, along that path. There are customers that are doing this right now today with AMD's hardware in niche cases. But NVIDIA's promise is that you can just buy a solution from them and deploy it and you don't have to think about it, which is what, like, the strategy that they use to get CUDA in the hands of researchers and academics is the same as the new strategy that they're using with things at rack scale. So the, the, the target, the thing that should be targeted has moved since just the software stack. And Apple does not have AI. Seriously lacking. Uh, they have to depend on their actual products to make money. And they're looking at a new thing. They, they look at their, their cult members and they know that one of the things that upsets them is when they go and they give their money to Apple and they get the new device. Before they can begin their worship of it, it has to be updated. <laughs> And that really slows things down. How oh, Apple plans to update new iPhones without opening them. Apple wants to read the... Yeah, there's a demo. There's a demo videos of this where you can wake the phone up in the packaging and update it in the packaging wirelessly. You can even charge it in the packaging wirelessly, which is pretty awesome. Like, that's a great... It's, it's, it, it's actually kind of smart. Like, why aren't we doing this before? And this would be great for intelligence agencies. The complete lack of any kind of verifiable security. I'm sure that... That uh, Mossad and the NSA is like, oh, look, look at that. We've pre-infected your phone even before we've opened the box. Oh, and the ability to remotely do things on your phone, that'll be removed after the sale, right? No. Of course not. But one thing about iPhone sales, when you buy it, you do, at least on some basic level, own it. It does belong to you. Now, you can't change the screen or the battery or load software on it that they don't want you to. You can but get the, a new case for it, though. The physical device, you can. I mean, you can just throw it in the lake if you want to. That's not true of your digital goods. New Blizzard Eula says that you don't own anything. You want to buy some skins or some other digital assets? Those are not assets. You're renting them. You might be thinking, well, I won't agree to that. Well, guess what? If you don't, you lose access to all of your Battle.net stuff. Forever. Not going to be playing any more Warcraft 3. I've got some news for you. <laughs> what happened to Blizzard? You might be still able to find a, a CD with that on it. <laughs> Gotta get the pirate version. 
You won't be playing online, though. No. Well, actually, through ca- I'll be playing online through IPX. <laughs> now, this sounds like a good idea or a good headline. I don't think it is. I think ultimately what's going to happen here, based on what they say in the, the fine print, the, the ending paragraphs, is the consumer is going to pay this bill. Visa and MasterCard agree to a $30 billion settlement that will, will lower merchant fees. Mm, X doubt. This is going to, it's like the monkey's paw is going to curl. So it sets a, a ceiling on how much you can have per transaction, but it enables the merchants to add surcharges to try and defeat the cash back from the credit cards. So what I do and what I highly recommend Get yourself a cashback credit card, pay it off every month. It's just free money. Plus, it's safer than using a debit card. They don't like that. So in the future, you might have to pay extra when you go to the grocery store if you're using a cashback card. So what you're going to have to do is launder it through another card. <laughs> <laughs> just cards all the way down. And here I found a design story. I'm hoping that Krista has some insight into this one. I, I do not. I don't Canva this. acquires Affinity to fill the Adobe-sized holes in its design suite. I don't, I don't use it. The worst thing about all these is that it gives designers an excuse for not learning how the technology works, which then often results in a worse result. I was hoping for more. I, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about it. Probably nothing good. Anytime there's an acquisition, it's almost never good. But I don't know. I don't and the Google it. search is still terrible. And a lot of people are trying to come up with startups where it's like, hey, Google's terrible, but why don't we just use AI to replace it entirely? And Google says, we beat you to it. Google tests uh, has started testing AI overviews from SGE in main Google search interface. I'm getting this in, in my search results because my search results, I think Google knows that my search results are filled with just AI garbage now and there's nothing useful in them. That's true everywhere. Like DuckDuckGo is the same way. And so now Google is trying to answer what I'm looking for in an, some sort of AI-generated summary that takes three or four seconds extra to load in. And eventually I'll have to pay for that because everyone will have to have a subscription to one of those services. Yeah. Well, they do point out that they are running ads around the AI-generated stuff, so they're generating money from it. Don't worry. Google's uh, going to be okay. That new model, the, the DXGH or DXG whatever, that's downloadable running locally is just destroying GPT-4. It's amazing. That's I, I like the competition for sure. Yeah. That's good for us. And the decentralization. Yeah. Hopefully we can but, stick to that. Hopefully we don't get a bunch of laws that come along. We actually do have a story about the decentralization later. I don't think there's enough decentralized training going on. We need we need, we need Satoshi Nakamoto is going to have to come out of retirement and bring us decentralized AI training. Using if, the underpinning of cryptocurrency. If he came out and it was proved that it was him, that would be Julian Assange the next time. <laughs> <laughs> we're not taking any more crap from you. You've caused us too many headaches. <laughs> uh, what was the name of the Switch emulator? I don't even remember it. Uh, Yuzu. Oh, yeah, Yuzu. Right, so that's what this is. <laughs> we, we hardly Yuzu. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was our title. Uh-huh. So, uh, obviously, that was nuked from orbit by Nintendo, and a bunch of other emulators got caught up in the fallout from that, and they all died. But some brave soul forked it, and this was very predictable. The Ars Technica headline is Switch Emulator Sue You Hit by GitLab DMCA. The project lives on through self-hosting. This is exactly what I predicted. Because Nintendo now owns the copyright to Yuzu, open source forks of it, even though technically that would be allowed under the license, doesn't matter. And, uh, Nintendo has enough precedent to say, we think this is illegal, even though there hasn't been a court case. DMCA will shut it down. And the other function of the DMCA is that now, if you say, no, my project doesn't do that, you have to identify yourself to Nintendo, the individual. And so if you do a counter notice, counter takedown, then Nintendo knows who you are. I don't want to be known by Nintendo. Yeah. No one does. And no one wants another app store or another walled garden, but that's what we're going to get. And instead of maybe escaping from the garden, we're simply going to consolidate them all into one mega garden. Phil Spencer wants Epic Game Store and others on Xbox consoles. Uh, Somebody asked him about Steam and he just sort of chuckled nervously. (laughs) (laughs) They're never going to win. They're never going to beat Steam, or at least they won't in my lifetime. And uh, this is a, a bit of a, an obtuse one, but it's interesting to show you how Apple thinks about, like they use Linux 
But they're like, eh, yeah, we use it, but we're better. <laughs> the Apple curl security incident, 12604. This is a good, you should read this to understand. This is the level of insanity that you deal with. And this is not atypical for Apple, how Apple does this. And this is why I generally have the low opinion of Apple that I do. Curl. Adap Apple has adopted Curl. Curl has an option that says, use this specific security certificate in the exchange and fail if it doesn't validate. Apple has modified their version of Curl, which they do not provide source for, that uh, checks the local store on the computer as well as the local file. So if you have something that fails the file, you explicitly told it to check, but passes for something that has been stored on the local computer, Curl will say that it passed and continue on with the operation, which from a security standpoint is actually a bad thing. But from an Apple standpoint, works as expected. Move on. Yeah, because the people at Apple that should be doing that level of engineering, Apple doesn't. It's They want you, it's like, it should be shiny and you should have an experience where it's like, oh, I feel things again. Apple doesn't care about these things. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'm just presuming that you don't right now. You like us, although I feel happiness when I read this headline, and it's not the best ending to the story. I guess it would be better if we just didn't have to deal with this kind of thing. But at least somebody got slapped slightly on the wrist here. Innocent St. Louis family terrorized in SWAT raid over stolen AirPods. Oh, I'm sorry. This is no. This is not a good story. Yeah, no. I was kind of like I don't. It. No, it's the other one. There's an update. Hopefully, these are in the same. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so this one this one is just, it's like, we're going to do a SWAT over stolen AirPods. Okay, cool. Were the stolen AirPods found? Yes, in the yard. Someone threw them out of a car window. Wow. So they smashed the door, refused to fix it. They knocked out drywall, because, you know, you might be hiding your AirPods in the walls. As you do. And they smashed through the popcorn ceiling into the attic. <laughs> It's like that, I've seen this GIF, I don't know what it's from, where it's like, stealth is optional for this mission, and it's just people like <laughs> slapping stuff around. It's like, what are you doing? I really hope that the the conclusion to that story is in line with the conclusion to the story that you thought it was. Which I didn't sort correctly, so uh, that's coming. <laughs> I don't know where it's, it is. It's like 10 stories it's here from somewhere. Now. It might be a nonsense, actually. But yeah, uh, this is about, uh, we're in the security section, obviously, and Apple has a big problem on their hands. It reported MFA bombing attacks targeting Apple users. So you're going to get a lot of multi-factor authentication notices because they're just trying to get lucky. If you were to click allow on one of those by accident, that would be really, really bad. In the meantime, it's just going to keep beeping. Keep making that little ding sound over and over and over and you can't do anything with the phone. Because they didn't put a timeout or a limit on flood control there. It's almost like the guys in charge of curl security are in charge of the MFA security. <laughs> and uh, we learned that the UK has blamed China for various hacks in the government section. These were those hacks, and now we know the vector that they used. Chinese snoops use F5 and ConnectWise bugs to sell access into top US and UK networks. Yeah. And this was hacking as a service. So somebody hired somebody to get into the UK government, which was probably state. And if you are getting a denial of service this week, it may be a brand new one that you've never experienced before. Can Cloudflare help you here? <clears throat> Loop denial of service attack hundreds uh, impacts hundreds of thousands of systems. So basically it's a slightly new technique for um, generating a denial of service attack, which is because, oh, the traffic comes from the systems involved in the denial of service attack trying to respond to a denial of service attack. Yeah, it's UDP, you fake the IP address, you get the request and then you respond to the victim. So you become the bad actor. And this is kind of terrifying. I don't know how realistic this is, but if this were a thing that happened, this would probably destroy society, don't you think? <laughs> like it'd probably take about a week, I would think. Truck to truck worm could infect and disrupt the entire U.S. commercial fleet. I'm honestly surprised somebody hasn't done this with Tesla because all the Teslas have, you know, SSH and a full Linux underbelly, not super well maintained. And so like one Tesla could infect a lot of other Teslas. 
So the electronic logging device, which is the tattler that every truck has in it that you know records, make sure you're not driving too long and not sleeping and so forth. Turns out there's really no security. And they were able to rewrite the firmware remotely just by driving next to the truck. And they were able to come up with a version that reinfects other trucks as it encounters them, which on the American highway system would be would all over, yeah. Yeah, it'd be immediate. <laughs> every 12 seconds. Every pilot. <clears throat> And uh, it's interesting how we are moving into this world of like, oh, we've got a service that takes your information off of LexisNexis or protects you from all these various data brokers. But again, can we trust these companies? Mozilla drops one rep after CEO admits to running people search networks. One rep is a service that prevents you from being on people search networks. So... There's a conflict there. Didn't Mozilla just get a new CEO? Didn't we have... Yeah. Isn't, isn't the theme of this week's episode engineers should be CEOs and people in charge? We need we need like a hardcore, you know, rights activist CEO at Mozilla. Or a security expert or a privacy advocate or something like that. Yeah. That'd be nice. We need... Uh, this, is, this would be the perfect job for Aaron Schwartz. That would probably put Mozilla out of business, though. Mm. How are they compete? They're barely competing. With a personality like that in charge, though, I think people would be willing to pony up a lot of money. And if you think that level of hypocrisy is only Mozilla, no, it turns out it might be more common than we think. Investors pledge to find spyware undercut by past investments in U.S. malware maker. Yeah. They literally had funded spyware development. Oops. This is also one of the things I complain about on the Apple devices, too. It's just like... It's a combination of turning a blind eye and everything being badly engineered from a security perspective. It is a dangerous combination. It is dangerous. And, you know, we've seen in the past, time after time, the elastic search or the database or whatever, just default password or no credentials or whatever. But think about that. Now we're moving into the era where that's going to be happening to AI. <laughs> Thousands of servers hacked an ongoing attack targeting Ray AI framework. Those AI frameworks, in this case, it's because the AI is known to be running on extremely powerful hardware and the threat actors have some ideas about what other kinds of systems those might be connected to. And so that's the payoff. When it comes to security, we keep seeing more and more interesting lessons learned from the crucible that is the Ukraine-Russia war. <laughs> this one is very impressive. Ukraine is using thousands of network microphones to track Russian drones. Basically, they strap cell phones in boxes on towers and lay them out. And the cell phones listen for things. And that was a cheap, cost-effective way of detecting drones. They also point out that they've got these water-cooled machine guns, which are ancient. But they can, because they're water-cooled, they can sustain like a one-minute burst. <laughs> and those are great for taking out drones. Look at that little car, too. It's attached to. It's like half van, half truck. That's what I need. There's there's a lot of crazy stuff happening with robotics like like that kind of machine gun. They're just strapping some AI on it, and it's like, look, Open CV is detecting things in the sky, and the machine gun it's like it's calculating the bullet drop, and it's just doing all this amazing stuff. And it's like some dudes built this in the garage, and this is a very anti effective anti drone weapon. This is amazing. I gotta wonder if you're dumping a minute's worth of machine gun rounds into the sky. Those are falling somewhere. Yeah. That can't be good. No. I mean, I guess there's more dangerous stuff falling out of the, the skies in Ukraine. And finally, we have, as usual, supply chain attacks. <laughs> and it's gotten so bad that they've just had to throw their hands up at this point. PyPy halts signups amid surge of malicious package uploads targeting developers. Basically, anybody could register a name. So they've throttled the ability to register a name. If you got your name in there, you can still upload malware all you want. But all the names have to be reviewed by hand now. It's not a good situation. No. But also, it doesn't really change the amount of work that the threat actors have to do because you could make, you know, a calculator package and upload a legit calculator. And then as soon as the people are like, yeah, this is, looks like a legit calculator, then upload your malware. It's not a great fix. That's it for the security section. Next up is nonsense. Nonsense is the best section of the week. So be there or be square. That's subjective. Oh, I think it's true. Somebody might really love security. They might. I think we all should love security. Nah, nonsense. Just Don't always get, get weird. It. 